If this is your first tutorial with us, welcome to the Galaxy community. Today, I'm going to be walking you through the Galaxy Basics for Genomics tutorial. This tutorial aims to help familiarize you with the Galaxy user interface. It will teach you how to perform basic tasks such as importing data, running tools, working with histories, and creating workflows. In this tutorial, we aim to answer the question, in human chromosome 22, which exon has the highest number of single nucleotide polymorphisms, or SNPs? Don't worry, the biological background is not necessary for following this tutorial, but feel free to take a look at the tutorial on the Galaxy Training Network where we have provided some research context. So let's get started. Once you have logged into the Galaxy, the Galaxy instance of your choice, I'm using usegalaxy.org, your Galaxy interface will look something like this. Here, you can see the activity bar and the tools listed on the left. The analysis history is recorded on the right, and the center panel will let you run analyses and view outputs. Let's start by creating a new history. To create a history, click the plus icon at the top in your history panel on the right. It is going to automatically be called unnamed history but let's rename the history that's something easy for us to identify and find. To do that, we'll click the pencil icon right here and we can change the name. For this tutorial, let's just call it Galaxy 101. And don't forget to click Save. Now, we need to add some data into our history so that we can begin our analysis and start answering our question. You can upload files from your computer, or Galaxy can also fetch data directly from external sources. For our first time, we're going to paste and fetch our data. To begin, click the up Upload in the activity bar on the left, click Paste and Fetch, and then copy and paste the data provided in the tutorial on the Galaxy Training Network. It should look something like this. Then click Start and Close. Over here on the right side, under the history that we just made, you can see the data uploading. Once it's complete, it will turn green. When the data is ready, we want to rename the data set so that they are easy to find and recognize. To do that, go to the first data file and click the pencil icon. In the center panel, we can update the name field. For this data file, let's change the name to exons. Scroll down and click Save. Let's do the same thing for the second data file. Again, go to the second data file, click the pencil icon, and we can update the name field. This time, let's name this da data file SNPs. Scroll down and click Save. Great, we're off to a good start. I'm gonna click the Home button just to bring me back to um, the original panel. Our objective is to find which exon contains the most SNPs. Therefore, we have to intersect the file with the exon locations with the file containing the SNP locations. To find the intersections, we will be using the Intersect Interval Intervals tool for bed tools package. We can search for this tool right here. On the left, under tools, there's a search ball, bar. I'm going to search intersect and select this tool. Now we can update the tool parameters to fit our needs. The interface of the tool should look something like this. Once you have it filled out, click Run Tool. Now you can see Galaxy running the tool in the history. Once the job has finished running, we can view the results by clicking on the eye icon. If everything went okay, you should see a file that looks similar to this. Since each line in our file represents a single overlap between a SNP and exon, we can find the total number of unique SNP IDs per exon. So let's do this for all the exons in our file. Going back to the search bar in the tools section, let's now search data mash. And we will select data mash operations on tabular data. Now we can update the tool parameters. 
So we want the, the, the data file that was just produced to be our input tabular data set, and we want to group the fields by four, which is column four. Scrolling down to operation to perform on each group, we want to count unique values on column 10. Once, you're, um, once the tool parameters look like this, you can click Run Tool. Once the job has finished, click the eye icon again to view the results. Your new output dataset should look something like this, with only two columns. The first containing the exon IDs, and the second showing how many SNPs were present in that exon. Now that we have a list of all exons and the number of SNPs they contain, we would like to know which exon has the highest number of SNPs. We can do this by sorting the file on the second column. Back in the Tools section, let's search Sort and select Sort Data in Ascending or Descending Order. Next to Sort Query, we want to make sure we have that most recent file, which was our data mash file. Under Column Selections, we're going to select Column 2. We would like this to be in descending order, and it's going to be a fast numeric sort. Now click Run Tool. The tool has run, so let's examine the output file. The file will look similar to before sorting, but now the exons with the highest number of SNPs are at the top. But let's say we want a list that only shows the top five exons with the highest number of SNPs. To do this, we'll go back to our tools and we will search select first. And we are going to select first lines from a data set parentheses head. We will choose the results from our latest uh, tool that we just ran. We will keep the first lines. And instead of 10 lines, we only want to keep five. Now you can click Run Tool. Let's take a look at the results. Awesome. Now the file only contains the first five lines of the previous data set. We have now determined which exons on chromosome 22 have the highest number of SNPs, but we can still learn more. One way to learn more about a genetic location is to view it in a genome browser. However, in the process of getting our answer, we have lost information about the location of these exons on the chromosome. But fear not, Galaxy saves all of your data, so we can recover this information quite easily. To do this, we will use the compare two datasets to find common or distinct rows tool. We will compare the original exon file using column four against the output um, from our select first tool that we just ran. And we are going to do that at column one and find matching rows on the first date of first data set. Click run tool. And let's take a look at the results. Awesome. Now we can see the locations of the top five exons have been added back into our data file. So a good way to learn about these exons is to look at their genomic surroundings. This can be done by using genome browsers. Galaxy can connect to online genome browsers like the UCSC genome browser. To do this, we first need to check if the database of our last history set is correct. And we are looking for a data set database type HG38. So we can do that by going over here and clicking on our last data set and expanding. Right here we can see that the database is, un, is listed as unknown and so we need to update this. So to do this we're going to click the pencil icon and we're going to modify the database build section right here. And we're going to do this by searching human and we want the one right here that says that ends with HG38. We're going to click that, scroll down, and click Save. And now let's double check over here. Yep, it has been updated to be HG38. Second, we need to check that the format of our latest history data set is BED. Right now, it is BED. 
If it wasn't, we would need to update this. Once again, go through the pencil icon, go over to data types, and we would change this site to bed. Now, let's go back to our history where our data set is still expanded. We want to click the visualize icon, which is right here. It kind of looks like a bar graph. To visualize the data in UCSC Genome Browser, click the main link next to display at UCSC. This will upload the data to UCSC as a custom track. To see your data at the user track, we can go back to Galaxy and copy the coordinates of one of the coordinates of one of the exons and then paste them. So here let's view our data and let's copy the coordinates. Let's go back. We can paste them right here. and click search. This jumps to that location. Okay, let's go back to Galaxy. In Galaxy, your analyses live in the history such as your current one. Histories can be very large and you can have as many histories as you want. When you look carefully at your history, you can see that it contains all the steps of your analysis from the beginning to the end. By building this history, we have actually built a complete record of our analysis with Galaxy preserving all parameter settings applied at every step. But when you receive new data or new report is requested, it would be tedious to do each step over and over again. So wouldn't it be nice to just convert this history into a workflow that we will be able to execute again and again? Galaxy makes this very easy with the extract workflow option. This means that anytime you want to build a workflow, you can just perform the steps manually once and then convert it to, the work, to a workflow so that next time it will be a lot less work to do the same analysis. To extract your workflow, click on the three lines on the right in your history column called history options to expand and then go down to click extract workflow. The center panel will show the content of the history with the oldest at the top. Let's first replace the workflow name to something more descriptive. For this tutorial, let's name our workflow find exons with the highest number of features. If there happen to be any steps that shouldn't be included in the workflow, you can uncheck them in the first column of the boxes. But for now, we want all of our steps, so we will leave them as selected. Now we click Create Workflow. Now that we have extracted the workflow, we can find it by clicking on Workflow in the top menu. Your workflows are stored here, and your newly created workflow should be stored at the top. To launch the workflow editor, we will click Edit. You'll see your workflow here, and you can rearrange the boxes so that you can see or clearly see the flow of data. For our workflow, we want to make sure to check the boxes for out file in the select first and compare, do da and compare to data set tools. We want to make sure that the rest are not selected. This makes it so that when we run the workflow, we will only see the two final outputs. Back over here, the box named exons is named OK but we want to update the SNPs name since the workflow doesn't have to be specific to SNPs because there are other genomic features we could use. So instead of SNPs, let's change the label to features. We will do that by clicking on our tool and then over here we can update our label to features. Let's also rename the outputs. Click on select first and in the menu on the right, let's scroll down and click configure output. to expand. Under Rename Dataset, let's enter a descriptive name for the output dataset, such as Top 5 Exxon IDs. And let's do the same for Compare Do Datasets. Let's name this one Top 5 Exxons. Okay, this looks great. Let's save our workflow by going up here and clicking Save Workflow. 
and let's return to the analysis view by clicking the home icon. Now that we have built and saved our workflow, let's use it on some different data. For example, let's find out which exons have the highest number of repeat elements. So let's start by creating a new history. And of course, let's give it a name. For this one, I'm just gonna call it Galaxy 101.2 and save. Perfect. Now we'll need the data set that lists the exons again, but we don't need to paste and fetch the data again. We can just copy it from our previous history. To do this, go over to the activities bar on your left and click history multi view. Under your Galaxy 101 history from earlier, you can simply drag and drop the exons data file into your new history. And now we have it in our updated history. Great, now I'll click the home button to bring me back to the analysis window. Now we need to upload some new data to run the workflow alongside the exons data. To do this, we will do the paste fetch option again using the link provided in the tutorial. Again, let's click upload data. Go to paste and fetch. Paste the file from the tutorial click start and close. Now that we have our two data files, we want to rerun our workflow. To do this, we will go back to our workflow and we will click run workflow. We want to fill in the inputs. We want exons to be the first file and repeats to be the second. Now we will click run workflow. Now you can see that Galaxy is running your workflow on the new data. All the steps that we just took in the previous section and all those tools we ran in the first part of the tutorial are now automatically running on the new data. Once the workflow has finished running, you will be able to view and examine the data analysis. Now that the workflow is finished running, feel free to check out the results and see what we found. Well done, you have now completed the Galaxy Basics for Genomics tutorial.